So about a month ago, I made a video talking about the first software application that I ever built. And spoiler alert, it really wasn't a, a raving success. Uh, ended up making no sales at all. But that application was, it wasn't a SaaS application. It was more so a marketplace that was selling a physical good. And so last year, I kind of unexpectedly took my first foray into building a SaaS application, you know, not really thinking much of it when I started building it. But as I started to, I realized that, yeah, this is kind of attempt zero, if you will, of building a SaaS application. And I would like to go over that story with y'all. I definitely think that things didn't necessarily go as planned. From my experience so far building SaaS applications, uh, nothing really does. So I want to kind of just be super real with y'all and, and just show all the things that go into building a SaaS application and also just some of the more unfortunate things that might happen when you are in this space. In a little bit, I will hop into my computer and show you the exact application that I was talking about, but just a little bit of background on it first. So the application is called ATX Setlist, and essentially what it was uh, is a concert aggregator uh, for the city of Austin, Texas. If you know anything about Austin, it is the uh, live music capital of the world, and so myself and my girlfriend, we love to go to concerts all over the city, and I wanted a nice space to aggregate the concerts from all of our favorite venues so that we would never miss shows, and we could also discover new artists as well. And then as an added bonus, there was a Spotify integration, so it would pull the artist's top track on Spotify so that you could listen to it right from the app and determine if you would like that uh, music, you know, if it's an artist that you've never heard of, maybe you don't know if you like the music, so uh, you're able to do all that directly from the app, which was honestly really cool and that part functioned pretty well. Uh, my girlfriend and I were just like about to start using it and then something happened and I will get into that in just a moment but before I'd like to just bring you inside the application so you can kind of see everything that I'm talking about. Alrighty so this is ATX set list. Obviously it doesn't look amazing. I think the the cards themselves look really nice but there's no navigation or anything like that. Nowhere to log in or do anything specific like filtering or anything like that and I will get into the reason why uh, in just a little bit, but I just wanted to take you through some of the features that I was talking about before. So like I said, this application aggregates some information from a handful of concert websites throughout Austin, and I just have a few of our favorite throughout the city. So we have some pagination in here. This is all client-side pagination, um, but we're able to kind of just sift through all of these concerts. Uh, obviously, you can see that these are from 2023, because I have not updated uh, the database since then. But what's really nice about this is if you see you know, a venue that you like, but you see an artist that you don't like, you're able to click on the Spotify button and it'll pull that up and you're able to listen to it right from the uh, application. So this will um, pull the artist's most popular song from Spotify and, and populate it here so you can see what, what they're all about. You are able to also link out to get tickets, but I think for a lot of these websites, they didn't have specific links to the shows themselves. It would just take you straight to the website. Um, and also these links are probably dead by now. So um, that was another cool feature of that. There is some mobile responsiveness to this as well, uh, which is cool. And that always just pulls up the artist's top song. Sometimes the Spotify API cannot find, like some of these people are super indie and underground, um, so they may, might not have a Spotify following or might not have a Spotify at all. So like I think this one, for example, specific coast, specific thing, you know, it's like sometimes they wouldn't match exactly right. And my plan here was to just kind of crowdsource that information. If something wasn't correct, uh, I would be able to remove it from my database. So yeah, that is the application that is ATX Setlist, or at least what existed of it. And I just want to talk about briefly the marketing strategy that I was planning to use for this application. See, initially, this really was just for my girlfriend and I to use. It was honestly going to be a birthday present. I was like, hey, you know, we go to all these concerts and it would be great to just have a, a centralized place to see all of our favorite venues and maybe discover some new artists as well. But as I kept building it and then I started talking to some of my friends, I realized that it might be a good opportunity for a SaaS and there might be an opportunity to charge for it as well. I didn't really have any monetization strategy for this. So far what I had built there was no you know user aspect to it. You know a user wouldn't be able to save their preferences on their favorite venues or request new venues or anything like that. So the whole charging for it was not really in the cards 
but I did have a plan for marketing the application to potentially get people using it. Uh, and if there was enough demand, I could potentially build some more features on top of it and possibly end up at a paid solution at some point. The main marketing strategy that I was planning to use for this was on Instagram. And there are a handful of really large Instagram accounts throughout uh, the city of Austin. And they will kind of just talk about events that are going on in the city. Sometimes they're talking about concerts and these accounts have like hundreds of thousands of followers and are very active uh, and the, there's tons of comments on every single post so i was kind of hoping that i'd be able to do some kind of partnership or sponsorship with them where i would give them some money and then they would promote my website and then i'd be able to get some users out of that outside of that it was just a lot of word of mouth so i was telling my friends and kind of just hoping that they would tell their friends got a big network of concert lovers throughout the city so just kind of just hoping it would spread in that regard maybe not the most in-depth marketing strategy ever uh, it definitely wasn't but it's also just like I said, attempt number zero, I would say at a SaaS application. And I also had no monetization strategy. So I wasn't about to go and dump a bunch of money into this. Uh, I really just wanted to get my toes wet and, and see what was possible. In terms of the technologies that I used to build this application, uh, this is always the fun part for me. I always love talking about technology and I hope that you're interested in that as well. But there are three main components to this application. There is the front end, which I showed before, which is built, it's just a React application um, that is using Axios calls to hit my backend endpoints. I tend to use React in all of my applications that I build. I use it at work. I have used it throughout my career. So definitely comfortable with a, a React in that technology space. So I have a code base for my front end and then I have a separate code base for my back end. And that server was built, uh, it's a Node.js server using Express and using Postgres as the database for that. I don't love Node.js and I think this project, and I'll talk about this in a little bit, steered me away from that in future endeavors. It wasn't a terribly complex backend. I think there were only a handful of endpoints. So it wasn't too painful, but it was definitely a lesson learned. And then the final piece of it was a, again, separate repository, which could be used, uh, run as a separate executable, which was a scraper to get data from these concert websites, uh, the venue websites, so that I could get all the data that I need to populate my application. The plan was to set this up as a cron job, to maybe be running once a day to get new concerts, or if there were any updates to like concert times or dates, uh, I could make sure that all that information was up to date. I never actually did get that hosted, and I was just running it locally every time that I wanted some fresh data. The scraping library that I believe I used for that was Puppeteer, and that was written all in, uh, in JavaScript. So now that the marketing is out of the way and the technologies that I use is out of the way, let's talk about why this ended up being such a huge failure. And so I had been building this pretty quick. I think I was maybe in month one or month two of building it, um, obviously not working every single day, but you know, working on it pretty frequently. And I was excited about it. I was excited to use it with my girlfriend and right around the end of the project. So I had pretty much everything that I wanted uh, for just a, a base version for my girlfriend and I to use. Literally that day, I got an email from Spotify saying that they had just released a new feature and that feature had something to do with concerts. And so I go and check it out and it is pretty much just a better version of what I was building in every single way. Obviously they have a, a wealth of data that they're able to access at any given time. And so my application, for example, only had four concert venues at the time. And you know, it was possible to add more, but it was kind of a pain to add more because you had to go into the website itself, figure out where all the data lived in specific HTML tags, and then figure out a way to scrape it all. But Spotify's version of it had every single concert venue throughout Austin. You know, there's dozens and dozens of them. And so, for example, uh, my application on a given day might only have like four or five concerts max, but I was looking at Spotify's version and it had just dozens and dozens of concerts every single day. And it's obviously already integrated with Spotify. So you could just click on the artist and go straight to their page and you were there. You can listen to their music, check out if you would like the concert and then go buy tickets. So needless to say, I lost all motivation after that. I don't really think that there was any point in me continuing to keep building my application. This wasn't even like an extra feature on top of Spotify, it was just included. I don't even know if you needed an account to use it. You could just see all the concerts. So yeah, when that feature released, that was the last time I wrote any code for this application, unfortunately. So obviously I was very disappointed to see this new feature come out. 
and just think that the last one to two months of development was kind of just a complete waste of time and i also didn't even get to give uh, this cool application to my girlfriend for her birthday uh, all these things were definitely disappointing but i do think that i was able to learn a couple things throughout the process that maybe recouped some of the uh, the time that i had put into it the first thing that i learned is just about some of the technologies that i enjoy working with uh, i kind of touched on this earlier but in terms of back end i really don't enjoy working in node.js and express especially working with javascript for me working with non-strongly type languages on the back end is very frustrating for me it kind of creates this black box where i don't exactly know where errors are coming from i can run into typing issues at any time random undefines that i don't understand and when it comes to the back end i really do working with strongly typed languages these days i am working mostly with uh, spring boot and java and i really do like having complete control over my response and request objects and any error objects that i am creating like i said this was also integrating with postgres and i think the express and postgres combination is just not the easiest from a developer experience. Spring Boot integrates very well uh, with, with Postgres and you're able to do a lot of local testing and spin things up very quickly. And that is just really more my style. Second thing that I learned is I think I just have to be faster. And unfortunately in the application that I'm building right now, uh, which is Dinnerbee, if you haven't seen any of my devlogs, I'll definitely link them up above and below. But it, you really just gotta be faster. No matter what you're building, there's probably somebody building something very similar or is already out and they're building features on top of it that are similar to whatever you're building too. So I really do think that the main takeaway there is try and build as fast as possible. There's always going to be competition, but if you can get something out faster and market it better, uh, you're going to have a better chance at being successful. The third thing I learned kind of ties into the last thing that I was saying. I really do need to do a bit more research beforehand. It is possible that if I had just looked up other applications that were doing something similar i might have stumbled upon a feature request for spotify or a like future release note that they were building something like this and then i never would have invested all this time into building it in the first place i'm not 100 percent sure that i would have found that but it definitely makes me want to do a bit more validation up front to make sure that there isn't like a carbon copy of what i'm building from a well-known and established company already if there's a bunch of like small companies indie companies um, that aren't super well known it can still definitely be worth it to build that especially if you're able to put your own unique twist on it but trying to compete with someone like spotify is just never going to work that'll do it for this story uh, i really do hope you uh, enjoyed listening to my failures i didn't necessarily love talking about it and reliving this memory but it's a good story to tell so i hope y'all were able to take something away from it like i said that was kind of attempt number zero at sas and i'm on my attempt number one right now with the application that i'm building it's called dinner Bee. Uh, definitely check out those devlogs if you haven't seen any of them yet. My goal is to get that at least in the beta version and hopefully a full release version by the end of the year. So if you're interested in that journey or just SaaS topics in general, definitely consider subscribing. I really appreciate having you around. Anyways, thanks a ton for watching all the way through to the end of the video. I really do appreciate that and I hope you have a great rest of the day.